Hey guys, it's Joy. I'm in my kitchen cooking dinner and decided why not let's do another recipe video. So I am going to show you how I make my homemade chuck wagon potatoes. These are the same potatoes that you can get from the chuck wagon at the state fairs that are like the best potatoes you will ever eat. I make my own homemade version. I've got everything prepped and ready to go. So let me show you what I do. Okay, so what I have here are some diced organic new potatoes. They are red and yellow mix and a finely diced onion. I also have, I think this is like maybe a 10 or 12 inch uh, cast iron skillet that I have preheated. What I'm gonna do now is go ahead and dump in um, a couple nice tablespoons full of olive oil, really get that pan coated and let that heat up for just a second. Get it all nice and coated. Okay, the oil is nice and hot. I'm gonna go ahead and add my onions into the pan and start sauteing those. Okay, so I have my onions sauteing. I'm just gonna cook these down until they are nice and soft. Um, they're gonna get really caramelized and delicious during the whole cooking process. Um, and in order to get them into that nice, caramely texture, I do want them to cook down a little bit before I add the potatoes. So, probably cook these for about maybe three or four minutes just to sweat them out a little bit. Alright guys, these are looking nice and translucent. They're starting to sweat down a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and add my potatoes in now. So we're just going to take the potatoes and sprinkle them in. Alright, I'm going to add another nice drizzle of olive oil so that these potatoes can get nice and golden in there. And then we will give these a toss with the onions. Get everything nice and coated in the olive oil so that it fries up. Okay, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and add in our seasonings. So for the seasonings, we're gonna keep it really simple. A little bit of onion powder just for some extra flavor, black pepper, garlic, and some salt. I personally like to use pink Himalayan salt. That is the only salt that I cook with. Um, it's very high in minerals. It's it's a really good salt for your body. It's the type of sodium that your body needs in order to function properly. But you can use whatever salt you have on hand. Um, so let's go ahead and add the seasoning. So again, with the onion powder, just a little sprinkle, just for some flavor. Nothing too, too crazy. And then for the pepper, we're going to go ahead and give it a nice coating of pepper for some good flavor. Garlic, same thing. Normally I would also slice up some fresh garlic to put in here. However, I am out right now, um, so we are going to use only powdered garlic. And I'm going to make sure I put extra so they really have a good garlicky flavor. And let me get the salt. So what I have here is a quarter teaspoon of salt. Um, potatoes can really take salt, so I might end up adding some more. But we're going to put some cheese on these at the end too, which is also salty, so we'll have to taste them. But for now, I'm gonna start with a quarter teaspoon of the pink salt. Give that a nice stir, make sure everything gets coated in the seasoning. Okay, so next, um, because I want these to cook through and not burn, I'm gonna add some water to the pan and it's gonna steam up. Give it another stir. Get all of those good brown flavors off the bottom of your skillet. Okay, and then what I am gonna do next is, if you have a lid that fits over your pan, pop the lid on it. I do not, so I'm gonna go ahead and cover this with a little bit of aluminum foil so that it steams and we'll let it go for a little bit. Okay, so this is my very, very makeshift lid, but it works, it keeps the steam in. Um, I'm going to continuously check on these potatoes and stir them, add more water as needed so that they do not burn. But in all, they're probably going to take somewhere around 15 minutes or so to cook through um, because they are sliced pretty thinly. In the meantime, I'm going to show you guys what I made to go with this. 
This is my crock pot. It is a Chefman. It is a non-toxic crock pot. It has a stone liner instead of a um, non-stick ceramic liner, which are full of toxins. And in here, I just have whoop, a chuck roast that I've had going on low for the past about, I don't know, six hours or so, I would say, maybe seven hours. Um, and in here, I just have some organic beef broth, some salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder, just like I put on the potatoes. And when this is done, I'm going to shred it up and make some gravy with those delicious juices. So that is what we are going to have with our chuck wagon potatoes for dinner. I'm going to go ahead and let these cook, and then we'll check back in with you guys um, throughout the cooking process. Okay, so my potatoes have been cooking for probably somewhere around 10 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and check on them and see how they're looking. And I do want them to get golden, and you can see that they're starting to brown, but I also don't want them to burn in the process. So now that most of the water has evaporated, what I'm going to go ahead and do is add a little more water to the skillet. Also, this is called deglazing your pan. So adding a cold or even room temperature liquid to a hot pan is go ahead and release all of those delicious caramelized bits from the bottom. So let's pour some in. That sizzle is exactly what we're looking for. So that sizzle was perfect. That means all of those delicious flavors are being released from the bottom of the pan. Go ahead and let that steam for a little bit longer. Meanwhile, I'm gonna start on my gravy. I have pulled as much of the juice out of this pot roast as I can, and I transferred it into a pot. We're gonna go ahead and make some gravy. Okay, so making gravy is pretty simple. If you've roasted a meat or cooked some type of meat, what that does is it releases the juices and the fat from the meat, which is what we have right here. It's delicious, it's flavorful. What we need to do to make it into gravy is make a roux. Um, how I make my roux is with flour and water. Mix that into a thin paste, and then I'm gonna go ahead and thicken my gravy with that. If you are gluten-free, you can also use cornstarch and make a corn, <laughs> sorry, make a cornstarch slurry. But I do have some um, flour in a bowl right now. I'm gonna go ahead and add some water, and we will make our roux. If you're in a hurry and you don't want to make homemade gravy, you can always do a packet like this, um, but it's always, always better homemade. So just going to stir that up, make sure it's the right texture that I want for my roux. That looks good. It's thick, um, but still pourable, and that's exactly what I want for my gravy. Um, this does need to come to a boil. I do have it on high. So once that comes to a boil, we'll go ahead and add our roux and we will have gravy. All right, our gravy is boiling. I'm just gonna quickly add a little bit more seasoning um, and you just season it to taste. So I've got some more pepper. I've got just a, whoo, we're fogging up. <laughs> just a dash of onion powder, some more garlic. Maybe a tad more. I like it pretty seasoned. And a pinch more of salt. Maybe just a tad more. Just so it's nice and seasoned. All right. Let's go ahead and give that a whisk. And let's get our roux in there and make some gravy. Okay, so I could not hold the phone and pour the roux, but what you want to basically do is while you are continuously whisking, you just want to drizzle in the roux until you get a good texture that you like. Um, and then let me turn this down a little bit. You do just want to simmer that down um, so that the flour cooks out. So I'm going to go ahead and let that simmer. I will taste it. If I need to add more seasoning, I will. And I'm going to go ahead and check on the potatoes. All right, my potatoes have soaked up a lot of the oil. I'm gonna go ahead and drizzle some more olive oil because the oilier they are, the better they will taste. And let's give that a stir. They look good. Everything is caramelizing on the bottom of the pan like it should be. 
I'm gonna go ahead and add just a tad bit more water to release that off the bottom of the pan and we will go on to the final steps. All right, so these are looking really, really good and caramelized just like they do when they've been cooking away at the fair all day. I did taste them, they needed to add a bit more seasoning, so I'm gonna add some more seasoning and we'll move on to the final step. All right, so I have turned the heat down. The last step is just to add some slices of Swiss cheese over these potatoes. What the Swiss cheese is gonna do is melt down. It's gonna add great flavor, make these potatoes ooey and gooey and delicious, just like you get at the chuck wagon at the fair. Um, so I'll go ahead and add just a tad bit more water to the pan as well to help steam it. Um, cover it up again and we'll check on it in about two minutes. I went ahead and poured my gravy back over my roast. I'm going to um, scrape up all of those delicious flavors from the bottom of this pan as well. Mix that into the gravy and then I will um, cut up the beef uh, and get it all soaked in the gravy. Alright, our cheese is all melted. I'm going to go ahead and give these a toss and then they're done. All right, that is it on the potatoes, you guys. They are caramelized, they are ooey gooey with cheese and all that good olive oil and garlic flavored, caramelized onions. These are gonna go so well with the pot roast. So let's finish making dinner. I have some broccoli steaming and we will show you guys the final results. All right, so here is the finished dinner. We have, of course, the chuck wagon potatoes, our pot roast with gravy and the steamed broccoli. Is it good? What do you think? Is your dinner good? Yeah. You like it? Yeah. What are you eating? Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this recipe. If you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. And thanks for watching. Have a good day.